November 7th, 1940. In Washington State, the brand new Tacoma Narrows Bridge is just four months old. The weather? Nothing unusual, a steady 40 mile per hour wind. But within hours, the bridge begins to move in a way no one expected. Twisting, bending, almost dancing. And then, it tears itself apart. This is the story of Galloping Gertie. The bridge that taught engineers a lesson so powerful, it reshaped the way we build everything from skyscrapers to airplane wings. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge was meant to be an icon, the third longest suspension bridge in the world at the time. It spanned over 1,800 meters across Puget Sound, connecting Tacoma to the Kitsap Peninsula. Engineers wanted something elegant and economical, and they achieved it, but at a cost. The deck was unusually narrow, only 39 feet wide for a two-lane bridge. It had a slender profile, which reduced material use and lowered the cost. Its main cables were anchored into solid concrete, suspending shallow stiffening girders only eight feet deep, much shallower than the deep open trusses used in other bridges of that era. This made the bridge light and flexible, but also vulnerable. Even before it opened, the bridge had a strange habit. It moved, a lot. Workers nicknamed it Galloping Gertie because in strong winds, the deck would undulate up and down like a roller coaster. These were vertical oscillations caused by wind-induced vibrations, specifically vortex shedding. The design had underestimated the aerodynamic effects on such a slender deck, and no wind tunnel testing was performed because at the time, it simply wasn't standard practice for bridges. On the morning of November 7th, steady winds of around 40 miles per hour swept across the bridge but something different happened that day. The motion changed. The up and down bouncing shifted into a twisting motion, what engineers call torsional oscillation. The bridge had entered aeroelastic flutter, a self-feeding cycle where the wind's energy doesn't just shake a structure, it actually amplifies the motion. One side of the deck went up while the other went down, rotating back and forth around the suspension cables. The torsional mode had a natural frequency of about 0.2 hertz, and the wind conditions were perfect to excite it. Worse still, the solid plate girders along the deck trapped wind like a wall, increasing lift and making the instability worse. Unlike simple resonance, where the driving frequency matches the structure's natural frequency, aeroelastic flutter can occur when energy from the wind is continuously transferred, even if the frequency changes. Once flutter begins, if there's no way to dissipate that energy, collapse is inevitable. By late morning, after over an hour of violent twisting, the stresses became too much. At 11 o'clock, the main span began to fracture. Steel girders bent and snapped. Sections of the roadway tore free and plunged into the Puget Sound below. Miraculously, no human lives were lost. But one, a small cocker spaniel named Tubby, was trapped inside a car on the bridge and did not survive. So why did Galloping Gertie fall? It wasn't simply that the wind was too strong. Plenty of bridges survive higher winds without trouble. The real cause was the interaction between aerodynamics and structure. Four critical mistakes sealed its fate. First, the slender, shallow deck made it unusually flexible. Second, the solid plate girders trapped wind instead of letting it pass through. Third, no aerodynamic testing was performed. And fourth, torsional modes were ignored in the design because engineers were still focused mainly on vertical loads. The lesson? Bridges are not static objects. They are dynamic systems. Airflow, vibration, and structure form a single interconnected problem. And if you ignore that, nature will find the weakness. The collapse of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge changed civil engineering forever. Today, suspension bridges are tested extensively in wind tunnels. Deck shapes are designed to be aerodynamic, often with open trusses or fairings to reduce lift. Tuned mass dampers, aerodynamic stabilizers, and other damping systems are now standard tools. When the bridge was rebuilt in 1950, the design was completely different, with open trusses and far greater stiffness. The lessons learned here even influenced aviation, skyscraper design, and wind turbine engineering. In a way, Galloping Gertie gave birth to the field of wind engineering itself. Galloping Gertie's final dance lasted only a few hours, 
but its lessons will last for centuries. In engineering, beauty and elegance mean nothing if nature can find your weakness. And the wind? The wind always wins, unless you're ready for it. And remember, stay curious.